Hello, everyone. Wow, this is loud. Uh, welcome to Valencia, welcome to the conference, and welcome to hopefully the last session for today. So, yeah. <laughs> let's go, yeah. It's been an exhausting five days. Let's, let's wrap this with a huge bang. So today we will be talking about policy report CRD and how you can manage your admission control, runtime, and scan reports. And that's amazing. So before we get into the technical part of the adapters and the policy reporters, let's maybe go through a quick round of introduction. So today we have four panelists. One of us wasn't able to join us because of some visa issues. That's Stephen right there. And we'll come to his introduction. We have a video from him in a quick while. I am Anushka Mittal. I come from India. I'm in my pre-final year pursuing bachelor's in engineering. I have worked with Falco in the past. I'll be talking about Falco Adapter soon. I work with Kiverno currently. And uh, let's go. Let's Over to you. Yeah, uh, I'm Frank. I'm from Germany. I'm a senior software developer working at Levu. And I'm also a contributor to different open source projects like Falco and Kiverno. And yeah, I'm also the maintainer of Policy Reporter, which will I present in a few, uh, yeah, this talk. So, Jay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our talk. My name is Mrithin Jay, and I also belong from India. Currently, I'm a final year computer science engineering student of bachelor's in technology from India. And I'm also an intern with Nirmata. Currently, I'm contributing to Kaiverno. Other than that, previously last year, I worked with Jim Bogwadia as a part of LFX mentorship to build Cubebench adapter, which we are going to talk about in today's talk. But before we move on to the adapters, let's discuss what was the foundation and motivation behind the formation of uh, Policy Working Group. Anushka, would you love to, uh, would you like to tell, let us know about that? Yeah. Definitely. So, you know, their policies are an important feature, and we have earlier seen a lot of scattered support for policies on different levels of maturities. So, the purpose, the motivation behind Policy Working Group was basically to provide an overall architecture, you know, a pl one platform to discuss current uh, implementations of policy as well as discuss future implementations and future proposals. So with this, we were able to provide a universal view of policy architecture in Kubernetes. Let's also talk about Policy Report CRD. This is what our adapters that we'll discuss in a while are based on. So policy report CRD, to tell you the motivation, imagine having a huge cluster with multiple policy engines and getting a lot of outputs. If they aren't unified, it might just be a big hassle. So the motivation behind policy report CRD was to unify these outputs in, of, you know, provided by multiple policy engines like Falco, Trivi, uh, Cubebench, et cetera. So this was aimed at helping cluster admins manage their huge clusters and do that by just you know, treating policies uh, just as your normal Kubernetes resources by using any Kubernetes management tool. Yeah. So and how fits this new CRD in our ecosystem? That's, that's lovely. That's a lovely question. So uh, you can see here we have a few points, uh, overview of how this fits into Kubernetes architecture. So there's a policy information point right here. That's where you get the information from your policy engines, that followed by the policy decision point where your policy reports, policy engines, policy squid. There you can see interaction between the policy administrator, uh, administration point, policy decision point. This is where you want to decide what's next. And that's where the administra uh, administrator sits and you know reviews these policies that are unified. After this, whatever, here, whatever happens here, the decisions taken are enforced in the last policy enforcement point. Now, that was a very brief introduction to policy report, CRD, policy working group, and the overall architecture. We will now move on to the Q adapters that were built. And we have Mrityanjay going with the first adapter called Cubebench adapter. Now that we know about what is policy report custom resource definition, let's talk about one of the first adapters that was built on top of it. So before we talk about what is Cubebench adapter, let's talk about what is Cubebench. So Cubebench uh, is a tool that was built by Aqua Security. And what it does is that it, it helps us run CIS security benchmark checks for the Kubernetes clusters that we are running, whether they run on AKS or EKS or any other clusters. So, those checks are performed by Q 
CubeBench. And what does it give? It gives us just results. But how to take these results, how to move forward with these results, is something that we are going to discuss how we solve with that CubeBench adapter. So what are we solving? What are we solving? Now, before CubeBench adapter, it's a simple process that's defined CubeBench installation. And it's like you, you have your Kubernetes cluster running. You apply the YAMLs of, uh, that, that is provided by CubeBench in their documentation. And you get the results. But that's a very manual process, and you are not able to move ahead after results. What, 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 what do you, if you want to have like more fine grain control after those results, if the cluster admins need that? That is what our adapter tries to help with. And not only try to help with it, but it tries to abstract that entire manual process by making it uh, being uh, inside a nested job. So if we see now in the diagram. Now, that entire process, which was a manual process, has been abstracted by the CubeBench adapter. And not only that, the policy report, the working group that has defined the policy report custom resource definition, it has been mapped with the results that we get from CubeBench. And on mapping, what we get after, 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 after the mapping that we get is the cluster policy report or the policy report, which can help us in policy admission controls. How did we solve it? How, 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 how we, how, what were the stages of solving it? So the first, stage, the first stage was that we already had the custom resource definition defined, of course. But we needed a client code to talk to them to, to, to create, update, or delete the objects of the custom resource definition. We had the custom resource definition, but we wanted their objects. So the first step was that, creating the client code. After creating the client code, the next big step was mapping, because we need to know how, how because both are different data structures. The CubeBench JSON is a diff totally different data structure, and policy report custom resource definitions have different types of mappings and JSON defined. Uh, that was a good process. That was a really brainstorming process where we mapped on what we need, how, what kind of source, what kind of properties, where are things fitting in. And after that, it was all hemified, I would say, using a single command, hem command, we can now a run the adapter, and it, it can be scheduled as a cron job. So of course, for the demo, we are not going with a one month or a one week cron job, uh, which is used in production use cases. But yeah, for here, uh, in the demo, next we are going to see the demo. It's, it's a scheduled cron job for two minutes, where we'll be seeing a live example of how we can generate a uh, cluster policy report with a CubeBench adapter. So it's a single uh, one uh, hem command. After that, the only prerequisite required was that you have a Kubernetes cluster. So locally, we are testing, so it's just kind cluster. It will define or it will automatically apply the custom resource definitions that we have. And after that, now we wait for the jobs. So uh, if we can fast forward a little bit so that we can see the jobs a little bit more earlier. Uh, yeah, it, it take two minutes, because we have scheduled it for two minutes. But yeah. So this, this, this is the cube bench, this, the third one that we are seeing. This would have been happened running manually, but that's happening now inside the job itself. So it's a nested job, actually. And after the, the jobs are done, we'll be able to get our first cluster policy report. And after the creation of cluster policy reports, if we don't change the name, uh, it will just keep on updating it with the results, whatever the results that we get. So we are getting our first results, as we can see. And we can also get the YAMLs which later on will be used by his policy report uh, viewer. So yeah, that was the demo from my side. Next, we have Trivia Adapter. Stephen is not here with us in person, but yeah, he has sent us a recording. So yeah. That's right. Thank you so much. From Stephen, you Stephen, a Kubernetes engineer in Denn at Kubernetes. Uh, thank, first off, thank you, Martin J, um, for your quick introduction on Qbench Adapter. So today I'll be talking to you about um, Trivia Adapter. Um, Trivia Adapter is one of the um, tools to adapt the policy reports. Um, so today I'll be talking to you more about Trivia Adapter. Um, let me share my screen real quick. Um, hold on, please. I'm sorry. OK, so this is just a quick introduction about myself. Um, I'm a Kubernetes engineer intern at Kubernetes, so I'll be talking to you about Trivi Adapter. Um, so first of what is Trivi? Um, Trivi is a, comp is a is a simple and comprehensive scanner for vulnerabilities in container image file systems, Git repository, as well as configuring issues. Um, 
trivia adapter is created is a tool created by the aqua security team um this is a um, the, I'm sh there's a link to the repo which you can follow um to to know more about trivi and if you need i'm sure the aqua security team are there physically for you um there's a boot in the aqua security team for you to go and follow or to ask more questions about trivi and yeah so i'll be talking to you more about trivia adapter which is going to be in the next slide um, what is Trivia Adapter? As the name implies, Trivia Adapter is a combination of both Trivia, the scanner, and Adapter, which is the policy report CRD. So um, what it does is to take is to, is to take uh, our container images, scan them with Trivia, then map the results with the policy report, then, re then, then, then report the results with the, um, as a policy report. So that's just a quick architecture of what um trivia adapter does so once we scan once we once, once we scan um our pod once once trivia adapter detects our pod um trivi takes charge which is going to scan our container image then map the results from trivi to the policy crd then reports the results with the policy reports as a policy report so um i'll be showing you a quick demo next and in this demo um i've already installed trivia adapter locally on my system and I have uh, a Kubernetes cluster running in my system, which is which has a pod and a container image is running as well in the pod. So I'll be scanning the container image with Trivia Adapter, then seeing the results for more visualization, for more for more um, visibility. I'll be seeing the results with the policy report. Um, I hope that's good. And yes, there's a link for you to go and um, for you to know more about Trivia Adapter. There's a link. Um, it's part of the working poly what working group policy prototypes. Um, you can you can go to the link. Then if, you have, if there's any pull request or any issues, please let me know. Um, in the repo, you can submit a PR. So yeah, let's move to the demo real quick. Thank you. Next, we'll have a quick demo on how Trivia Adapter works. Yeah, that's how your reports would look for, uh, via Privy Adapter. So with that, uh, we can move on to the Falco Adapter. Hello again. So uh, yes, for the next part of the presentation, we'll be looking at the Falco Adapter that was built uh, last year. It was just released in Falco Sidekick 2.25. So let's start with some background that's about Falco and Falco Sidekick. So what is the Falco project? The Falco project is an incubating CNCF runtime security tool, right? It's the de facto Kubernetes threat detection engine. It is pretty amazing. It acts like the security camera that uh, you know, looks for and detects any data thefts, intrusions, or any unexpected behavior. To detect this, Falco has a certain set of rules. Uh, these rules are uh, extensive, they're great, uh, they're built for Kubernetes, Linux, and Cloud Native. Moving on to um, Falco Sidekick. Falco Sidekick acts as a middleware between Falco and whatever output you need from Falco. Yeah, more or less. So Falco would uh, basically give out five types of outputs. Falco Sidekick takes the HTTP output and you know uh, sends it forward to whatever type of output that you'd want. Um, that could be, well, any of the ones that I've mentioned here and many more. Policy report is 
another uh, another output to Falco Sidekick. So if you have to use it, you just simply install it and enable it to be you know true while installing Falco. So yeah, moving on to the Falco Policy Report Adapter. Fol Falco Policy Report Adapter. The overall architecture looks somewhat like this. Where on the top you can see the extended architecture of Falco, how it's giving out alerts via an HTTP output that Falco Sidekick is accepting, how Falco Adapter fits in. Falco Adapter takes that output in your cluster that already has these CRDs, policy report and cluster policy report, installed. It maps the Falco output to the CRD and helps in generation as well as updation of multiple policy reports. This is done in an N plus one fashion, that is uh, N namespace specific reports and one cluster wide report. This is one of the cool things about Falco policy adapter. The next one being, you know, multiple Falco sidekicks in a huge cluster. Each one has a unique name. That's nice. The best thing about this, I find, is the configuration options because any end user would want to optimize uh, personalize the kind of events they see in their policy reports, you know, the number of events, the priority of events, and what events would they call as high priority or low priority. You can configure all of this through policy adapter. And finally, you get Falco outputs. There are different fields. They're being mapped to policy report CRD, so there's this sort of agreed upon mapping between them. Next, let's dig into a quick demo that uh, will show you how your Falco sidekick uh, with policy reporter turned on looks, policy report turned on looks like. So I have a cluster running, I have the CRDs installed, and this is how the logs would look when your policy report's being created, uh, a namespace specific report, or a, well, cluster wide report. Following this, um, if I just want to quickly look at the reports, the summary, uh, that's how that would look like. Yes, so like I mentioned, there's one cluster-wide report and uh, one for all the namespaces. In my case, I have three dummy namespaces, just for the sake of demo. So yeah, something like that. My uh, limit to the events was 10, so you can see that the maximum number of events in my report is 10. And yeah, that's just how the reports would look like. This is unified, right? So the cube bench adapter output, the trivia adapter output, and mine, it just looks the same. I think that's all from my side. Uh, over to you, Frank. Yeah, thank you. So now we saw what tools can generate these policy reports and how they look like in a YAML format. But um, yeah, how to work with this kind of CID? I will present you policy reporter and uh, what it is and what was the motivation. So Policy Reporter is a tool to add observability and monitoring possibilities to your cluster security based on this presented Policy Report CRD. The motivation came from different disadvantages. I encountered myself while working with it in a mostly context of Caverno. So one, diff uh, one problem was for me, if you have a cluster-wide policy which violates namespace scoped resources, you have many resources across many namespaces. So it's very hard to find all results that relates to a single policy. Also, you have the problem that a single policy report can contain many results for different policies and resources. And if a new violation occurs, it's not that easy to find it. And it's also very hard to find all results for a dedicated resource. To help with this kind of issues, Policy Reporter provides different features. So at first, you can send new violations to different tools, for example, Grafana Loki, Elasticsearch, Slack, Discord, or Microsoft Teams. It has an optional metrics endpoint, so you can also use your existing observability and monitoring tools like Prometheus and Grafana. And it has also a standalone dashboard to get a graphical overview of your results with all kinds of filters without the need of additional infrastructure or tooling. So, how does this work? Policy Reporter consists of three uh, components which are installed as you configure it. 
we have the core component, which is responsible for watching over the policy report CID and converts it into a matrix endpoint as a end in, uh, REST API. And it is also responsible to send your new violations to the configured uh, tools I mentioned. The second one is the Caverno plugin. Yeah, as a name suggests, it is especially for Caverno and adds additional information on top of the policy report um, definitions about your Caverno policies and how do you configured it. The last one is the policy reporter UI, which is the mentioned dashboard and yeah, uses the REST APIs of the other components to view your informations in a graphical and uh, more readable way. To show you what I'm talked about, I prepared a demo, and if you want to try it out yourself, I have prepared a GitHub repository for you where you have all instructions and Helm charts. You can rebuild the same environment I'm using in this demonstration. If you want to find out more about Policy Reporter and yeah, want to try, try it out with more possible configurations, check out the Policy Reporter GitHub um, repository under the Calverno organization. It has also a link to a dedicated documentation where you can find all information related to it. So let's start with a demonstration. So at first, you see the mentioned policy reporter UI. We have an overview dashboard which shows you all violations found in all policy reports in your cluster. You have that grouped by a namespace, and you have also a counter for your cluster policies. And under it, you have yeah, much more information and details about your violations by tool. For example, we have also Caverno in this environment where you see your Caverno violations. If you want to know what happened or what was wrong in your configuration, you can click on an item and see the uh, error message of this uh, report. We can also see the results provided by the mentioned adapters of Falco, for example, where you see a policy about attached exec. Also here you see the error message and also the provided metadata over the output fields. Yeah, and also the Qbench informations. But that's just an overview. If you want to see all informations from a report, you have dedicated pages for the uh, source of a policy report. Just have a look at the Qbench thing. So we can also group them by other informations like rule, which makes more sense for Kubebench. So we have all results that are related to the API server. Now, if you want to see only the failed ones, you can just filter the table and you see the failed one. You can also filter for the warnings. And so you can just grab all violations you are interested in. So if you have already monitoring solutions like Grafana and Prometheus. You can also use a subchart for monitoring, which interacts with the Prometheus operator, and you get, with this installation, also pre, uh, free, uh, predefined dashboards already in your Grafana, which are labeled with policy reporter, and yeah, you get almost the same information as in the UI with the different uh, filters and overviews. And um, yeah, you have one source of truth as always before. Then we have a logs page, which works as a demonstration of the real-time notification stuff. So if we just uh, run a short engines, which will violate against um, some Caverno rules, they will just show up in this logs yeah, a few seconds later, and you see, okay, at this time, uh, the new pod violates against four policies. This is an example. As I said, you can use this with Grafana Loki or Elasticsearch or other tools like Slack, which makes more sense in the production environment. So the last slides are, as I said, Caverno specific. You get an overview about your running policies, how they are configured, you can show some YAML configuration, and you have a detailed page where you also see the results related to this policy. So that's mainly it about the policy reporter. And now we have a short outlook what comes next. Now that we know what happened or what has happened in the past, let's talk about what's in the store for the future. So 
As we mentioned, as we talked about these kind of adopters, there was another adopter that one of my mentees with Jim uh, built. Uh, he was also there with us, but he had just left, Hardik. So he built Cubama adapter. It was recently incorporated, so it was recently completed. The other that is in the process, and we are going to build it later, is the gatekeeper. Other than the uh, policy reports growing adoption, what we have is that we also plan for the mapping of uh, the, cl the, the, uh, the, cluster, uh, the custom resource definitions to OSCL. Uh, and not only that, uh, but, but entirely automating the entire process using a CLI. So that is one of the other features that we are, uh, that are in the plans in the outlook. Uh, the other two things that we are planning is on the Kubernetes control catalog. So it's, it's more like, again, a mapping of all the security configurations that we try to see uh, fitting into our Kubernetes cluster. And yes, absolutely, we all are here. So uh, we all want that uh, you all be a part of the future. So next is that how we can come in touch with the community that we work with, the policy working group that we work with. So this is our mailing list, Slack channel, GitHub, and uh, community. So do help us uh, building this community make even better. I'm looking forward uh, to see you all in the community channels. and. Now that we know about the community, I know that this is the last talk. After that, we will be most probably going to our homes. So yeah, before going home, let's get, stay connected. Let's stay in touch. These are our social media handles. Do give us a ping on Slack or on Twitter or on GitHub. Would love to know and answer your questions and okay, stay in touch with all of you. Yeah, so like just on. talk. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. Now, uh, if I'm not wrong, we have a couple of minutes. So if there's any questions, if there's anything you'd like to talk about, now would be a good time. Yeah. Sure. Hello. How you show them in your timeline, if you show the overall status? Uh, yeah. Thanks. So in uh, Gavana, you showed the overall status of the uh, cluster or the namespace. Can you also like tie this back to the individual developer or the individual team that then can fix it? Uh, sorry, can you, it was a bit... Uh, uh, so here the uh, policy was uh, violated, right? That's where you have this report for. Can yeah. you, uh, and if you run like a larger cluster in an organization with multiple teams using the same cluster, can you also like tie this back to the individual team or the individual developer that can then fix it? Um, so in the Grafana dashboard, there's not much filtering in the UI or get general for the violation pushes I mentioned, you have the possibility to um, create channels and filters. So you, have, you are able to send different or violations from different namespaces or a set of namespaces to different team channels, for example. So they are notified that when in their uh, working environment something happened. Um, yeah. I think next question. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, so, uh, is so for example, for Cert Manager, we have our own uh, policy approver and our own like certificate request policy type. Would we be able to build independently our own um, policy reporter to work with this uh, with this res with this um, what was the resource name? Policy report resource. Would we be able to independently develop our own integration for this, is my question. Yeah, you are able to build your own kind of adapter for your engines. And as long as, you, uh, as your results are a policy report, you can work with the policy reporter. So you will yeah, get the same information, the same functionality for your policy engine as long as your results are mapped to a policy report. Right. The only thing that will change will be the mapping. We already have the client code for you. Uh, it's in the Kubernetes working group repository. Uh, you just need to import that, and after, depending on the policy engine that you have, you can independently build it and contribute to it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I think, do we have any more time? All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for showing up. And, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Yeah.